welcome everybody. Today we're going to have a look at doing a soil test. And uh, so what we've got, we've got this area here, it's a sort of fairly rectangular area. And we want to make sure that we've got a sample that's representative of the whole area. And uh, it's quite important that to get it representative of the whole area because you can be biased. And uh, so, for example, I could take a sample from here, from this little part of the garden. But the problem with that is someone might have tipped some lime there, they might have tipped some sand, and it could be completely different here to what it is over the other side. So what we're going to do is take a sample over the area and put all the samples together so it's sort of we get an average of what the soil type is which is more accurate. And in order to do that what we do is we look at the plot and we think right how can we do that? Well we mark out an imaginary W on the plot. So what I've done on the top side there I've put a tape measure down and it's actually 10 meters as luck would have it and I've divided it in two so you, there's a red screwdriver at five meters so we've got a red screwdriver there which is just pushed in the ground so that's giving me five meters and just here I've put a uh, a little uh, little trowel in the ground at two and a half meters and you could use a cane you could use uh, whatever you can a piece of twig to improvise so I've got something to aim for when I do my sample over the site. Some people use a figure of eight, but in this case we're going to use a W. Um, I've got an ogre here and what I'm going to do is we're just going to take a sample from the top sort of about the top 150 mil, six inches of soil. We're going to ignore the top layer, the organic layer. We don't need to test for organic matter in this test. We're interested in the sand, silt and clay, everything that's below two millimeters and we're going to test the texture of the soil and we're going to test the pH of the soil. So I've got my bag with me. Uh, in this case you can use any shopping bag or whatever you've got or an old tray as long as it's not had other samples in it or that's going to change the result. So we'll get started and uh, I'm going to start in the top left hand corner and what I'm going to do is every fourth pace I'm going to take a sample so rather than look for a nice area and take a sample uh, or in a bed of soil I'm going to be disciplined and every fourth place take a sample and then carry on walking. Okay. So I'm going to take uh, my first sample in the uh, in, in this sort of corner if you like and I'm just going to screw the Ogre into the ground just to the top of where it's fluted uh, and then I'm just going to take that out and then pop it in the bag and just knock off the, the soil. If there's any uh, moss or leaf litter just move that to one side but in this case it came out without pulling any of the uh, of the thatch or debris and so now I'm going to go I'm heading for my marker which uh, in the ground there's a little marker and I'm going to go one two three four but well, I can do every fifth place and we'll just pop that back in and we'll take a sample Okay, pull it out, you can remove the organic matter, don't need that, and then we'll knock it off, so just knock the soil off into the bag, and we'll carry on going, and again I'm heading for my little marker, one, two, three, four, bounce, hit back towards another marker, five, take a sample okay pop that in the bag and 
then of course I'm just going to head for that marker down to the next one, up to the top, collect all the samples and put them in the bag. Now if you're doing a field and you were using the ADAS method of collecting soil samples, then they aim to have at least 25 over say, uh, you know, about an acre field or something like that. So obviously the more samples you get, the better. But to be realistic when you are going out landscaping someone's garden or you're designing a garden and you need to survey it, doing something like this, you can see that I'm going to end up with maybe about eight samples in the bag. The next thing I'm going to do is to put a label. Now I've already written out a label, which is really important because if you are doing a lot of surveys and you might have bags to put them in, uh, you could easily forget. So you want to write out, on this one I've just put 7th of January, collected from Broomfield Hall campus, and I'd put the name of the building uh, just underneath and the area. You could put even a little plan if you want to, but that's really important if you are doing four or five, you could get the samples mixed. I'm gonna put that in the bag. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll let this, uh, we'll put it on a tray, let it dry off, before we do the next stage, which is what we're gonna look at. But uh, I'm just gonna collect the rest of the sample and, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll have a look, see what we do next, okay? <laughs>